Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. It's just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us and for participating with us in this venture of the reading of the Word of the Lord. And I pray that the Lord would just speak to us today, that He would minister to us in and through His Word, and that He would be blessed in our reading of the Word today. Today we're busy in the book of the Acts again, and we're going to be going through chapter 17 and chapter 18, but just the first 18 verses of chapter 18. As we go into chapter 17, we see that Paul and Silas, having departed from Philippi, moved to Thessalonica. And there, Paul takes three Sabbaths with the people in the synagogue. And he starts teaching them that Jesus, whom Paul is preaching now, is actually the Christ. And you know that at this time, the Jews were waiting for the Christ. They were looking for the Christ. The Christ or the Messiah had become this thing that they were waiting for to redeem them out of the hands of the Romans and into political wellness. And so they were constantly waiting for that. But now Paul is saying, this Jesus that I'm preaching to you, this is the Christ. And while some believed, uh, some Jews moved with envy, gathered people together and they went against Paul and Silas. And Paul and Silas were sent away to Berea. And the Bible says that the people in Berea were more noble than those people in Thessalonica because they received the word of God with readiness of mind and they searched the scriptures daily. And because of this, many of them believed. But when the Jews of Thessalonica heard that Paul and Silas were preaching in Berea and that people were coming to the knowledge of the truth of God, they came against them in Berea and stirred up the people against Paul and Silas and Paul was sent away. And Paul was brought to Athens and he was quite broken up when he was brought into Athens because he saw how the people were given wholly to idolatry and everyone is just worshipping these false idols and false gods. And so he disputed with the people in the synagogues again, the Jews in the synagogues and with devout people and he went into the markets and he just preached the word. But we see that the people had a very humanist kind of mentality. They were pleasure seekers they had spiritual pride. There was so much going on in the city in terms of the spiritual decline of the people and how the people were looking to idols and looking to themselves for their own salvation. And so then, because the people were always overtaken by the newest fad, when they heard Paul preaching Jesus Christ, they called him and they brought him to Mars Hill and they want to hear now what he has to say. And Paul then very quickly rebukes them and he says, you guys are far too superstitious because you've got this one altar to the unknown God. And you've, you've got all of these altars to all the other gods. And then one you've got to the unknown God just so that he doesn't strike you down if he does exist. And Paul, seeing this as the perfect opening, says that I want to teach you about this unknown God. And he starts with creation and he starts going through this uh, sermon and it is the perfect sermon to be preaching to the Gentiles that are so superstitious because he goes through so many elements here. And then he calls the men to repentance. He calls them to accountability. He tells them that there is a, a time appointed. But what he is calling them to is the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the forsaking of the other gods. And so then he speaks about something that is so far outside the mindset of man in that he speaks about the resurrection of the dead and there this is where the people start floundering a little bit but some people believed and they clave to Paul at this point and so we get into chapter 18 and in chapter 18 we see that Paul then departs and he goes to Corinth and in Corinth he uh, he lodges with Aquila and Priscilla and they were leaders in the assembly there in Corinth. But they also had the same occupation as Paul and Aquila were both tent makers. And so Paul lodged with them and he went then into the synagogues and started preaching every Sabbath, persuading the Jews, persuading the Greeks to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now Paul being a tent maker is actually quite fascinating in that obviously he was a Pharisee and he would have probably taken up this occupation after his conversion to the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was actually sewing or stitching together the Old and the New Testament. We see how Paul then takes the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ or the fulfillment of the law in Jesus Christ 
And he was then showing that from the Old Testament. So he was basically stitching up the Old and the New Testament. And as a tent maker, very skilled in stitching up these two materials together. And here Paul is doing that in the spiritual, not just in the natural. But here preaching in Corinth, he sees that the city is steeped in fornication and in sin. And there's just so much going on here. And Paul preaching to the Jews then, seeing that the Jews have just rejected this gospel, he turns to them again and he says, your blood be on your own heads. And he turned to the Gentiles. And here he started preaching to the Gentiles. And the Lord encouraged Paul. And Paul stayed there quite a long time, over 18 months. He stayed in Corinth and preached the word and started establishing the church in Corinth. And this is where we're going to leave it for today. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 17. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens. And receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God, that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live 
and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him, and believed, among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Chapter 18 After these things Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence, and entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul, and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Sencrea, where he had a vow.